about a young, rich ruler. Talk about eternal life. How we obtain eternal life. Mark chapter 10, verse 17. Mark 10 and 17. And if you found it, say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. We find the following text. In. And when he was gone both forth in the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is God. Amen. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatever thou hast, and give to the poor. Thou shalt have treasures in heaven. Come, take up thy cross, and follow me. Amen. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Jesus and Jesus looked around about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Mm. With emphasis. And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, mm. how hard is it for, him, for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus looked upon them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. Our story is a very interesting story, one that we've read several times in our lives as Christians and may have heard it preached many times. But it's a story about a young man who was concerned about where he would spend his eternity. Amen. And that's a question that all of us from time to time ask, you know, what happens after life? Amen. There are many who believe that life ends once we die or once our brain is dead. Amen. Then that's the end of it. The body ceases to exist and there is no, nothing else to look forward to. Amen. But the Christian life in the, in the Bible, it teaches us that life does not end for us once we die. Amen. That there is life after death. Amen. Yes, the body may cease to exist as we know it, or the soul is separated from the body. Amen. But then there's another phase of living Amen. that one has to go through. And this is where we say commonly among ourselves, we go from labor, where we are now, working <coughs> to reward. That's to heaven. That's to be in the kingdom of God. Amen. Well, this young man, who was a responsible young man, it indicates this, but number one, he was wealthy. Uh, number two, he had grown up in the synagogue. So he knew some things. He knew um, not to commit adultery. He knew not to kill. He knew not to steal. He knew not to lie or bear false witnesses. Mm -hmm. And he learned not to defraud, but he, and he also honored his parents. Mm -hmm. But he was perplexed at this junction in his life. He had everything that he needed. He was an intelligent young individual who seemed like life was going well for him. Mm -hmm. But yet there was something churning inside of his mind that he was not clear on. What happens to me once I leave? I, I, listen, I'm wealthy. I've accomplished a lot. I live a good standard of life. But yet 
there was a question that was unanswered in his mind. Mm -hmm. There are many who attend church on a regular <coughs> basis, but if you to ask them, will they uh, spend eternity with God? Many will, are not sure that they will spend eternity with God, but I want to let you know right now, mm -hmm. the Bible lets us know. Yes, that yes. we who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior uh -huh. will live eternally yeah. with God. Yeah. If we keep the word of God as we live his life. Amen. 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 This young man wanted to know, good master, what shall I do that I might inherit eternal life? Uh -huh. He was not thinking about living, but he was doing more thinking about dying. But some people are preoccupied with dying often. Amen. Jesus looked at him and asked him, why do you call me good? Amen. He wanted to know, Rabbi, you are the teacher of the word. You are Amen. the example of the word. Uh -huh. You see, beloved, we cannot look at anyone in life and call them good. Amen. If the question is asked about us, do we have any flaws Many of us will raise our hand and say, yes, I'm not perfect in every aspect of my life. Amen. I'll be the first to tell you that there are some things that I try to get right myself. The Apostle Paul make it clear Amen. in Romans chapter 7. He said, when I try to do good, Amen. he said, evil is ever present Amen. with me. Amen. And then that's with us all. You know, some of us who are past a certain age, you know, we think that only mm. the young folk have issues oh, with life. Mm -hmm. Well, I say to the young folk, keep on living. It doesn't Amen. go away. Amen. 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 And to the old folks, just keep getting older. Amen. 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 you find that the things that troubled you young, when you were young, they don't carry much weight, but they still trouble you. Amen. 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 And so all of us, as we live our lives, we must understand that there is none good Amen. but God. Amen. That's why we seek the wisdom, the directions, and the word of God in our life Amen. to help us become better at living. Amen. Better in our relationships. Yeah. Better in our rapport with other people. Amen. Better in our work that we serve God. Better Better on our job, better at school. Amen. It helps us to be the person that we are striving to be every day. Amen. And it also takes away the excuses that many of us try to churn up. You know, God knows my heart, and I'm not that bad. You know, bad is bad. I don't care what kind of degree you put on it, whether you are that bad or whatever you may call it. But the fact of the matter is, is that we need God in our lives to help us out. And as I stated earlier, the young man went to synagogue. He knew the law. He knew the commandments of God. He understood what they meant, but yet he was preoccupied with eternity. Amen? Amen. He told Christ that, listen, all these things that you are asking of me, I've done them from the time I was a child. Amen. It always makes me think about, in growing up, I did not go to church. Did not spend a lot of time around church. Amen. Um, I didn't think that this was the place where I belonged. It wasn't until I became a man that I realized that I was out of the safety of God and that I needed to find a way to find Christ and find a way for eternal life. Going to church just wasn't going to cut it for me. I need to have a personal relationship Amen. with God. Amen. 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 It's good to come to church, isn't it? Amen. It's good to sit in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It's good if someone was to say, yeah, you were brainwashed. And I'm glad that every Sunday I go to church and get my brain washed out. Amen. Amen. Everybody bring me washing from day to day. Amen. 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 You come to church and you learn these things not to commit adultery. You Amen. learn these things not to steal. You're reminded of them day by day all the time. Yes, so God through his Holy Spirit washes our brain every Sunday. And if you're a Bible reading, prayer, praying person, every time you come before God, you ought to thank God that he cleanses your brain and you didn't have to use time to get it done. Amen. 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 This is where we come to learn about Christ. Amen. But then there are those who come and just sit because it was just a ritual in their lives. If this young man had had a relationship with God, the question is, where will I spend eternity? Would have never crossed his mind because he would have had the assurance. He would have known for sure that because of my relationship with God through his beloved son Jesus, 
I have eternal life. Right, I need no one to convince me that I'm right. either, either way or the other. I need no one to try to compel me to do anything any differently than what I'm doing because I am assured of what the word says. Amen. 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 One writer says, these things have I written so that you may know that you have eternal life. Amen. There should not be a Christian anywhere who's not sure of where they will spend eternity. Amen. That should be a, that should be etched into your heart and etched into your mind. Mm -hmm. It should be stamped yes. on you. Yes. That, yes, I am a Christian. I am saved because the Bible tells me so. I am Amen. saved Amen. because Jesus tells me so. Yes. I am saved Amen. because each Sunday I go to that laundromat called church yeah. and I have my brain washed out. Amen. Amen. So I know Amen. for sure that any junk that was put in there during the week is all cleansed out. So I know for sure that I have eternity with the Lord. Amen. 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 We need to know just not just knowing the law and, and not just coming to church and not just knowing the word and not just being in the midst of the saint. There's no guarantee. Amen. Amen. This young man has some things that he had to work out. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The thing that also occurred to this young man, I want you to look at verse number 21. And Jesus, hearing what he says, beheld the young man, looked at him, and the Bible says that he loved him. Yeah. Loved him. Loved him. I want you to circle that. It says that God, uh, that Jesus loved him. Amen. Amen. There's no guarantee that because God loves you, Amen. that you will spend eternity with him. Amen. Sure, we know John 3, 16, don't we? Amen. Help me say it, y'all. For Amen. God so loved that he was. Now, whosoever what? Shall not but have. Yes, we know that God loves us. Isn't that right? We even sing the song. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red, yellow, black, and white. Jesus loves the little children of the world. The scripture lets us know that God so loved the world and all of its inhabitants that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. That is a guarantee, but it's not a guarantee that is just automatically given to you unless you accept it. Amen. Unless you believe it, unless you embrace it, yeah. unless it becomes a part of your life and your being. Yeah. Yes, God loves love, us. Love. Yes, you can look at your neighbor and say, God loves you. God loves you. Amen. If you can't tell anybody anything else, in the, anything positive as you're going through the day, just tell them that one thing. I don't care how mean they are, how upset they may be. Just take them and look them in the eye and say, and say to them, God loves you. That has that has a way of lifting the weight of the shoulders of everyone who may be burdened down. Because you would not like to know that they are loved by God. Now, I don't want to brush your bubble. I don't build you all up. But I don't want to brush your bubble here. But I have to let you know, because God loves you, there's no guarantee. Amen. That you're going to have eternal life because it says here, Jesus looked on him and loved him. All right, but there's something else going on here. Yes, it said one thing that you like. You know, all of us have that one thing that we may be lacking in our lives. And this is not this is not about what you do. It's, it's about where what what you are doing for God. It's not about whether you are you 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 are doing all that the Word of God says. It's what is holding you back. What is in the way? Amen. What are the obstacles? What are the blocks? Mm -hmm. What that you put in place of God in your life is what you Amen. have to ask the question. Amen. What are the hindrances that are there? Let us lay aside that weight, that sin, that so easily beset us is what the scriptures tell us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Yeah. Let us set those things by that aside that's a hindrance. Yeah. This young man had a hindrance in his life. Mm -hmm. He was a rich young man, responsible, went to church, mm -hmm. did all that he was supposed to do, but yet Jesus saw one thing in his life. Yes. Someone say amen. 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 He said, you like one thing. Go. One thing. Mm -hmm. Go thy way. Sell whatever thou hast and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasures in heaven. Come, take up that cross and follow me. 
Jesus makes it clear here. He says, whatever the flaw may be, beloved, mm -hmm. whatever we may be lacking, he said, get rid of it. Get rid of it. This young man was wealthy, mm -hmm. rich, he was responsible. Mm -hmm. He attended services, mm -hmm. but Jesus saw something in his character that he liked. Mm -hmm. And that was his wealth. Mm -hmm. It was very important to mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. You know, often we may say in church, and talk, we talk a lot about money, but you know Jesus talked more about money than he did heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. All right. He talked a lot about money because mm -hmm. it was money and wealth and riches that was the thing that kept a lot of people out of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Many businessmen uh, will say that the reason why I'm reluctant to go to church mm -hmm. is because I am wealthy mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. put a lot of emphasis on the fact that my wealth is the thing that may hold me back. Mm -hmm. You will hear straight from me, there is nothing wrong with wealth, money, and prospering. God never said that. It's when wealth, money, and prosperity become your center focus. Amen. 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 The Bible doesn't say money is the root of all evil, does it? No. Nope. It says for the one love is the root of all evil. When we are blinded by money and we are constantly pursuing money, when we are blinded by wealth and that's all that we can think of all the time, then our pursuit of wealth has become our God. The scriptures make it clear. Hear, O Israel, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. If we love wealth and riches more than we love God, Amen. we have already put ourselves in a bad position. Amen. God wants you to have wealth and riches. Matter of fact, some of you are gifted are gifted givers. Mm. You are gifted to give. That's why you have. Amen. Because God has blessed you knowing that what you have mm. doesn't have you. Amen. Amen. Your possessions Amen. don't possess you. Amen. Know that if he blesses you with an abundance, yes. you don't mind giving. Amen. You don't mind giving because Amen. you know the source of your wealth Amen. comes from God. expression. The reason why you can't get anything because your hands are closed. Holding on to what you have. You ever heard that before? Yes, but if you want to give from God, learn to do what? Give. And as you give away, your hands are open to do what? Receive from God. Give God a hand. Amen. If this young man would have been able to look past his possessions. Mm -hmm. He would see the blessings that God had for him. Amen. When we get past what we have, uh -huh. or if our motivations is beyond what we have, uh -huh. God has a way of blessing you. Yes, yes, I'm yes, always, my wife and I are always discussing the story about a young lady who was um, in the healthcare field mm -hmm. and she lost her job uh -uh. and was wondering what to do. Well. So God dropped in her spirit that on the other side of town uh -huh. where the wealthy lived, there was a need for the elderly to have assistance. Uh -huh. And so she started a company. All of her friends that were not employed got them together and they started providing care, health care, uh -huh. those in the other neighborhood that needed assistance. Mm -hmm. You see, what happened was that God showed her that there was a need. Mm -hmm. Something that she loved. Yes. And something that she would do regardless of what the pay may be. Yeah. Yeah. And God began to put those who have with those who didn't have. Uh -huh. And the next thing you know, she had a booming business. Yeah. And she became wealthy because she did not think only about the money uh -huh. that she would make, but she also saw that there was a need. Amen. Someone Amen. told me somewhere, if you find a need, uh -huh. if uh -huh. you can find a need somewhere uh -huh. and position yourself to meet that need, uh -huh. you will be blessed beyond measure. Uh -huh. But if all that you are thinking about is how much money I can get, you will fail every time. Uh -huh. Amen, somebody. Uh -huh. And don't be afraid that once you start your ventures, uh -huh. That if you, you drop the ball, that you may fail, that it may not prosper like you wanted to all the time. Just remember, put God 
first. When you put God first, he has a way of blessing you beyond all that you can think or imagine because God controls all the wealth that's in this world. Amen, somebody. He said not only, amen, take